hello. We're here again, uh, joined by State Representative Tisha Buss. We're here uh, on Monday, February 13th, six weeks into the legislative session, and uh, joined as we are each week by Tisha. So Tisha, thanks again for joining us. Um, and uh, what do you have for us this week? Well, this was a, a very intense week for our education committee. We were taking testimony on Wednesday morning when in our inbox popped the Sergeant of Arms, um, letting us know that the Capitol Police were deployed to Mar Montpelier High School. And when the police came back um, to report, so it, it turned out to be a hoax, but of course they can't treat it like it's a hoax. They have to treat it um, exactly as the threat that it is until they find out more information. And so, you know, to come into a school with their guns out to administration that was was very fearful and um, you know it was it was quite a scare and the government the governor has you know named it terrorism because it truly is um, it was in a lot of schools the the investigation is still underway but this certainly puts a big spotlight on what Vermont needs to do to ensure more school safety um, both in its individual schools, but also just, you know, from our leadership down from the, you know, from Secretary Frenchine down. So he did a few weeks ago present some very bulleted uh, points on school safety that he would like to institute statewide. Um, every school, of course, has their own ability to bring further information towards that, but there would be absolutely some measures in place in, at every single school. And one of them is actually something that I, I'm pretty sure based on my attendance at Monday night's meeting at our supervisory union about a scare at the Woodstock Elementary School that, wait, it was at Pomfret um, Elementary. So when that came up, it was obvious that parents did not feel that our communication plan was sufficient to meet the level of threat. So it, I believe what will come out of that is that parents will become involved in creating a safety plan. And I think that's really important. A, I think it's really democratic and it's how things uh, should be. I think, um, that it can be different parents that, that than the ones that are also serving on the school board because we have to use, uh, we have to spread out some resources and get different perspectives. And sometimes school board members, I think, can be so involved that um, you really need someone on the outside to also contribute. So I'm, I'm really hoping for, you know, positive and collaborative engagement with our families and with the administration of each school and the supervisory union to make some great choices on, on how to handle these situations in a clearer and more productive way in the future. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and uh, can you talk a little bit more about what happened uh, in the school board? I mean, in the, the sorry, the Windsor Central Supervisory Union board meeting that you were at uh, this past week and I know that it was uh, it was quite a turnout. I read that there was uh, two hours of public comments, um, so I'm sure there was emotions were at, at a high. Um, and um, just a little plug: we will we'll be getting that recording, and we'll be airing it on Cuba Valley TV, like we do with all of the WCSU meetings, so people can tune in um, later this week to that. But I'm just wondering about your experience and how what the temperament was in the room, and 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 and. Um, you know, what your role would be sort of moving forward, um, you know, being in the House Education Committee and also serving this this district. Y yes, thank you. That's a great question. And what I learned the most from this meeting is that it's not just about, parents are not just concerned about one moment on a school bus or one threat. They are also concerned about the general school culture. How do kids that are experiencing mental health concerns, um, how is the school addressing them? And also, how is the school ensuring that everyone who is affected by episodes of mental health, how are they doing with it? 
And I have a, a piece that's coming out in the Vermont Standard because we we wrote uh, we, we heard a lot of testimony this week from mental health um, agencies and we don't have the mental health support that we typically have available to us for two reasons. There is a workforce shortage, but we also have a significant larger number of kids needing support. And not only that, they need support longer than they've ever needed it before. So all of a sudden we have less workforce and way more kids in crisis. And that creates a, a very large and significant issue that, you know, at the state level, we're going to work on shoring up our designated agencies. Those are the agencies that are put in place to provide mental health support to the, to the kids in school. But they not only help the kids in school, they help the kids' families. So they can go outside the school and into the family world. What the schools have had to do is hire more uh, staff because they, they're not in a position to say, sorry, we can't take that kid. It's a public school. They have to take the kid. The designated agency can say, we're at capacity. We can't take the kid. So then the school hires a, hires a mental health professional, but that mental health professional cannot go into the home, which is sometimes where the big body of work needs to be done to support a child. And the other issue is that the state, the, the school cannot draw down Medicaid dollars that will help with uh, providing service to that child either. The designated agents can, but the school cannot. So then it provides a, a not excellent use of our taxpayer dollars. So it's a huge priority for the legislature. Um, it's already underway in a, in a bunch of different committees because it's, you know, in commerce and it's human services. So, you know, it'll take a, a little bit, but we are, our uh, attention is very, very focused on this very acute problem in our schools. Yeah, I mean, and it's certainly not isolated incidents. I mean, you talk about the, the incident that happened in Montpelier, this incident that happened in the in the in the Windsor Central Supervisor Union. I didn't realize it was at Pomfret Elementary, but uh, um, you know, and, and uh, there's a number of these incidents happening statewide. Um, well, I might be wrong about that, Patrick, um, because I I know that I know the teacher because she uh, used to teach my child. I thought she was in the fifth grade, which make would make it Pomfret, but. Mm -hmm. um, Please, please forgive if I have this information. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I guess my point was that is these aren't isolated instances. These are happening um, region wide, statewide. Um, you know, with the the bullying and the the the, the gun threats, whether they're made up or, or fake or not. Um, you know, and there's just a lot of. Uh, a lot of issues, and it's related to the mental health and and and, and bullying. And I don't know. Um, there's probably no easy answers, but, uh, you know, you're in the right position for, um, you know, thinking about these things, I'm sure on the, on the legislative level, being in the house education committee. And, um, I can't imagine that's all you're working on. So do you have any other, uh, quick bullet note, uh, highlights before we let you go? Uh, yes, I mean, I am working, um, certainly on, on some different things for my own passions, which is to figure out how to provide more housing for our workforce. Um, some of the bills that are are coming up will, you know, potentially create rental registries to ensure safety for short term rentals. They, um, and then also um, work on a potential surcharge on second homes that will either go into the education fund or potentially go into housing projects. Um, if it goes into the education fund, it automatically, um, you know, in the theory, should reduce our homestead tax rate. And that would be a really strong goal of mine. When I went door to door, uh, the thing I heard the most was it's so hard to afford to live here and our property taxes are a huge part of that. So, um, you know, second home ownership certainly drives up the property value. So it would make sense to uh, add a surcharge to uh, help level that playing field a little bit for we homesteaders. Very good. Well, um, thank you again for your time. Um, if anybody has any questions or, or, or feedback for State Representative Bus, particularly if you live in her Woods, Woodstock, Reading, or Plymouth uh, Legislative District, uh, well, uh, the email is there on the screen and you can contact her there. I hope you don't mind, Tisha, but... It's we have good. been putting your email out uh, 
Narrative. Yes, I yeah. want you to. Uh, okay, a lot of my job is to um, is to bring ideas, local ideas, up to the state house, and then work collaboratively to make sure that the uh, issues of the state and the issues of our local communities are in sync. Great. Okay. Well, once again, thank you for your time, and uh, we'll check back with you next week. And I think we'll probably be rejoined by uh, senior staff writer Tom Ayers of the Vermont Standard. Great. Thank you for having okay. me.